It's 109 days to the election. I was up late last night listening to the speech from hell, and this is not my first, second, or even third cup of coffee. Let's get started. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. Good night and good luck. Folks, welcome back to the Lincoln Project, the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room this week is that convention in Milwaukee. Now look, I've been to a lot of Republican conventions, more than the average human being could ever imagine. Um, all of them in my adult life, essentially, except for two. The 2008, because it was semi-canceled because of a hurricane, and 2020. This idea that this was a normal Republican convention could have been dismissed at the very first milliseconds of it. This was the most bizarre transitional moment in American politics, and I don't think people have fully appreciated it yet. Let trump mania run wild, brother! Let trump mania rule again! First off, it was about the coronation of Trump, and that was, that was what it started out as from the very, very, very first second. This was not about a party. This was not about a movement. This was not about a set of philosophical or ideological principles. This was about the adoration and adulation of Donald Trump. It had a tent revival feel to it from the very beginning. Now, when you go into something like a convention, it is meant to be a rah-rah. It is meant to be a thing that gets the party fired up and the people go back to the states and they, they do the, the hard work of political organizing, all that business. Not as much at this convention. There was a certain strangely almost religious aspect to it, in part because of the attempted assassination attempt by a strange, lonely young man against Donald Trump, um, sort of peeled back one of the areas in which you can see how they believe in this guy, they, how they treat and think about him. He is a God figure. He is their St. Bartholomew, stripped of his flesh. Um, and and it, it, while that is sort of explicable because there was a, you know, a an attempted assassination attempt. The weirdest small symbol of the week, to me the strangest small symbol of the week, is people wearing the fake ear pawn on their ears in solidarity with Trump. Helping President Trump set a new fashion statement and we're standing in solidarity with him for his wound. Look, he clearly didn't need it. He didn't wear it when he went golfing the next day. He didn't wear it after they superglued it or sutured it or whatever they did to, to stop the bleeding. And I'm not minimizing the attack and I'm not minimizing that, that a bullet, you know, tore through the top of his ear or a piece of glass from the prompter. We don't know. I don't know. But what I am saying is if you go and watch the movie, Bob Roberts, the, the, the crazed kids standing outside the hotel window, if you look through uh, any number of other um, moments in political history where a, an elected leader becomes something different, becomes a cult leader, becomes a person who cannot be gainsayed inside their movement. You know, look, it, this was that moment. This this convention was that moment. And it's important for you to frame yourself, you're thinking about the MAGA movement as a post-rational movement. Now, that post-rational movement showed some cracks this week, and I am fascinated more by the weakness of the GOP convention than by its strength. Now, the one strength it did have, Grinder was offline. It, they, they completely flooded the zone. Grinder was broken. Um, there were a billion little alt-right MAGA shitbird staffer boys, as there are at every CPAC and every Republican convention, who are closeted, who hate gays in, in, in public, and yet are doing grinder in the in the before times it was craigslist and the before times before that who the fuck knows i'm a straight dude i i i, I know nothing of their folkways and rituals except that there's a lot of closeted hate inside the gop um i call it the schlap effect that's why grinder went down if you take my meaning uh <laughs> i do amuse myself with my own jokes from time to time it was a late night so you're gonna have to ride with me here today folks look 
I think one of the biggest exposures of a weakness in this convention is J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance is an OG never Trumper. He loathes him. He despises him. He hates him. All these things for years and years and years. And then as political opportunity became pendant for him, he becomes a passionate Trumper. This just, this is a, and then as political opportunity became pendant for him, he becomes a passionate Trumper. This just, this is a classic example of the power of evil to corrupt weak people. And when you get to a J.D. Vance, it's kind of a weak person. He's kind of a weak guy. He's not a strong person. He is a, he's a guy who is manipulated in by, by his own ambition, by his own insecurities. And the funny part about this was a lot of people inside Trump's own orbit did not want J.D. Vance. A lot of people inside Trump's own orbit did not want a guy who had hated Trump in the past because you know what? How do you trust that guy? It would be like Donald Trump saying, hey, Rick Wilson changed his mind. Now he wants to come work for me because J.D. and J.D., you know this, brother, because we, you know, you know this, J.D. Um, J.D. was one of the original never Trump pillars of our community against against Donald. He was one of the original fighters against Donald. He made an articulate, passionate set of cases against Donald. So, of course, this week, since the Lincoln Project has an official department of fuckery, um, we were in Wisconsin, we were in Milwaukee, and we were hitting the Republican audience with a message called The Snake. It was an ad we did this week. And, and that ad took Trump reading that favorite piece of weirdo poetry he reads about the deadly snake biting the woman and laid it over J.D. Vance's quotes. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to announce that Senator J.D. Vance has the overwhelming support of this convention to be the next Vice President of the United States. Who has heard the poem called The Snake? On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. Take me in, O tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O tender woman. Sighed the vicious snake. I can't stomach Trump. I think that he's noxious. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But instead of saying thank you, that snake gave her a vicious bite. Fellow Christians, everyone is watching us when we apologize for this man. Lord, help us. I have saved you, cried the woman, and you've bitten me, heavens, why? That he was fundamentally divisive, arrogant. You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. He's leading our political discourse to a very negative place. Oh, shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. Might be America's Hitler. Might be a cynical a-hole. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. I'm a never Trump guy. I never liked him. Now, we beamed that into the hall. We beamed that to Trump's staff and his team. We know already it's caused some disruption. We know already that while J.D. Vance gave a workable, passable, I mean, I'd give it a C-ish. Uh, maybe a C plus for a few sections of the speech. Um, he, he gave a decent speech. There will always be a disconnect there. These people do not ever forget a slight, an insult, or anything else. Now I'll tell you, breaking some news, as you guys probably have seen a little bit. There were a, there was a group of billionaires telling Donald Trump that they were going to really push for JD Vance. They're tech bros. They're Peter Thiel types. They're Elon Musk types and all all these other Silicon Valley morons. One of the cracks in this whole thing is that Elon Musk had to buy J.D. Vance for Donald Trump. That $50 million a month, he's buying J.D. Vance for Donald Trump. Why is that? J.D. Vance follows a weird uh, set of philosophical principles that come out of Silicon Valley. And folks, this is in the rabbit hole a little bit, but... There's a guy named Curtis Yarvin, Y-A-R-V-I-N. Um, also, and I'm just going to say the name because it's so goddamn weird. Also known as Mincius Moldbug. He is an alt-right thinker. He is a neo-reactionary thinker. 
he believes that America should not be a representative democracy or a republic, but should in fact be a monarchy. Uh, I know, I know you're thinking the same thing I am. Like, wasn't that the whole like origin story of our, of our hero arc that we didn't want to be a monarchy? Well, yes, it was. But, but Vance is a part of this weird movement of what they call the dark enlightenment, which is, is the most self-aggrandizing, circle-jerking, philosophical uh, branding I can think of. But Vance did not rock the world of a lot of the people there in the house. Vance did not thrill a lot of these people in the house. Why not? Well, first off, just like his buddy David Sachs, who gave a speech about Ukraine that went over, as I like to say, like a wet fart in a hot car. Um, it was a disaster. He was being booed. He provoked, yes, provoked the Russians to invade Ukraine with talk of NATO expansion. And Vance has been very anti-Ukraine, very pro-Putin, very pro-Russia, very pro-Lavrov. And even he recognized that that was an area that people in the hall were not happy about. There are Red Dawn conservatives even in the hall at the RNC. There are people even at the RNC who know that Vladimir Putin is the bad guy in this story. Vladimir Putin is not a great dude. He is not a friendly guy. He is not a he is not a a, a role model for the youth of America. And Vance knew that, but there were a lot of people complaining about it inside the GOP foreign policy where I talked to somebody who had not called me for six years, calls me up the other night during Vance's speech and says, oh my God, what the fuck have I done? And this is a guy who, you would know his name. You would know his name. He is a potential appointee in the Trump foreign policy or defense apparatus going forward. And he had a moment of, of not dark, but actual enlightenment. He, he realized it. These people have played with the fire of Putin way too long. And so the elephant in the room there is that Vance is not the greatest choice in the world. The other people that are unhappy with Vance are folks that really thought Vance was pro-life and he, and he has been going along with Trump's tactical retreat on, on things like abortion. And there were folks that thought Vance was pro-Second Amendment. He's gone along with Trump's tactical retreat on make the Second Amendment. What did you not hear at this convention? You didn't hear about the old saws of the Republican social conservative fight, abortion, gays, and guns. It's a tactical retreat by Chris LaCivita and Susie Wiles, but it's a retreat nonetheless. I want to talk for one minute about the, the large adult sons, the fail sons, Coakley and slow Eric, um, simple Eric, if you will. Their speeches to the convention and, and every other Trump like spawn, including down to like third cousins who got a speaking slot. There's a really important thing to understand here. And it loops back slightly to what I told you about Curtis Yarvin's influence on J.D. Vance and the Republican Party. The Trumps want to establish an actual dynasty. They want to establish a political dynasty. They want it to be that that the, that those two the uh, the fail sons, uh, Coakley and simple simple Eric, are princes to Donald Trump's king. They want to establish that their children will be royalty as well. And Trump has always been obsessed with royalty. He's a guy who went out and had his own crest made. If I were to have a crest made of it, of a quill pen, um, a field gun, and a cocktail glass, probably. But but Trump went out and had his own crest made. He's obsessed with being a king, a royal, the lion symbol of the house of Trump. But you're seeing that at the convention. You're seeing them try to set themselves up as a dynasty. And there are a lot of people in the neo-reactionary movement, in the alt-right movement, in the MAGA movement, who view them that way, who think that it will go, it will pass from King Donald to Prince Eric and thence to Prince Baron and so on unto a thousand generations. Watch that developing a little further. Eric made a long, strange speech last night, but that's Eric preparing to run for office. I'm going to, I'm going to call it Eric runs first. Don Jr. may or may not run. Um, and after that, uh, I, you know, God knows which one of the spawn ta takes a swing at it. 
but they're going to have a built-in mechanism of that weird semi-royalty thing. The next elephant in the room about the Republican convention, and I'm going to get to it last because it really is the best, is that fucking speech. Uh, again, sorry, fourth cup of coffee here. Just give me a second. It was a lot. You know it was a lot. It was so much that people in the hall, as reported by Tim Alberta and several other reporters, were checking their phones, were wondering if they could leave, were chit-chatting in the audience. Because Donald Trump last night gave a Trump rally speech. Let me say this. The original time and prompter on the speech was 40 minutes. That's a long speech, but it's not a super long speech. Uh, <laughs> we had the Lincoln Project betting pool. I was at 59 minutes. I was wrong. It was 93 minutes. Um, but that idea that Donald Trump was going to give a speech that reflected this moment he experienced on Saturday and changed him in some way, because all day long, I'm hearing from reporters all day yesterday and the day before, Trump is now more philosophical, isn't he? Hasn't he had a life-changing experience? Isn't this a moment where Donald Trump is finally becoming presidential? Y'all, will you stop taking the goddamn bait from Trump's press people? Will you please, for the love of Jesus, once in your life, recognize there is never a better Trump. There is never a better iteration of Trump. Nothing changes Donald Trump. Why? Because as my friend George Conway says, Trump is a psychopath. He is a sociopath. He doesn't care about other people. He doesn't care about anything else around him. He cares about his own self-conception. And so a good speechwriter, a Stuart Stevens, a, a Matthew Dowd, fuck, even a Rick Wilson could have gone out there and said, Mr. President, here's a speech that does reflect the moment you survived, that does reflect a graciousness of spirit, that does reflect an uplift and a recognition of the sacrifices of the people around you. What was it you noticed most about Trump's weird mention of the victim of the shooting Corey Comparatore? Comparatore, I think it is. What was it you noticed about it? He went over and kissed the helmet, which was a weird Trumpian thing. But the only moment when he was describing the death of this man that really lit Trump up was when he started talking about how much money they'd raised for him. I am very proud to say that over the past few days, we've raised $6.3 million for the families of David, James, and Corey, including from a friend of mine just called up. He sent me a check right here. I just got it. One million dollars. And I'm going to give Trump at his word a tiny little scintilla of credit. I'm glad that they did a GoFundMe for the family of the victim of, of crooks. I'm glad they did that. I am glad they did that. Donald Trump, alleged billionaire, did not throw millions of dollars of his own money at the family. He got his people to raise that money. Okay. To, from from donor from small dollar donors, but that was the only moment he kind of like you saw his eyes like engage because that's what he cares about. And look, I will tell you this: that forty minute speech that they put in the prompter was not a great speech to begin with. It was not great. It was it was disjointed. It was, meh. but at some point he just said, "Fuck it, we'll do it live." Okay. And it was the worst cliched rally speech bullshit. And it was dragging and dragging and dragging. And man, I was texting with reporters last night and signaling with reporters last night who, who really were offended how played they were. They were really offended. And like, what the fuck is this? Because Trump just talked and talked and talked and talked. He couldn't stop himself. He is so narcissistic. He had to stay in the spotlight. He had to keep his mouth running. We had to get sharks and boat batteries. We had to get Hannibal Lecter. The late, great Hannibal Lecter. We had to get all of the imaginary grievance monsters that live in Trump's brain all the time 
and make him crazy all the time. We had to get all that shit that is always in Trump's head. He had to dump it out again. I keep telling you, Donald Trump cannot be bored. He cannot take a moment where he's up without fucking it up. He cannot take a moment where he's where he should be big and gracious and presidential without turning it into the lean over the podium and we will depart the illegal filth from our sacred land. The blood and soil stuff is always going to be there. The conspiracy stuff is always going to be there. You know, he ta- literally brings up unity and and we're going to turn down the rhetoric and then he starts attacking the Democrats saying, they're trying, to, the deep state is after me, blah, blah. He can't ever be better. And so I, I want to wrap up this elephant in the room with the biggest elephant in the room. We don't know what's going to happen with President Biden. The long-running campaign by a combination of Obama bros and disgruntled Democrats and and very hot and hungry media people is seems to be taking its toll on the president. It seems to be taking its toll from a lot of public reporting and what everybody's talking about in the in the echo chamber. It may not last. He may not stay in the race. Okay. Now look, let me say this really quickly. Donald Trump is beatable by anyone. Anyone. You you could you could run a ham sandwich against Donald Trump and you could still beat him. This man is helping us make the race a referendum on Donald Trump. He's helping us make the race a choice. If it's a choice between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, who knows how it rolls? If it's a choice between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, who knows how it rolls? But I want to tell you this. If it's a choice between America and Donald Trump, America's going to win this race. Got to stay focused. Keep the attack on him as we kept the attack on him this week. That was one thing that, that, that I will say. I'm very proud of the Lincoln Project team this week. Top to bottom, every single aspect of our organization this week has been on fire. I mean, absolutely on fire. I, I want to shout out Whitney, Ben, Joey, Jeff, Kate, Andrew, Philip, Fran, Jeff, Ryan. Uh, I mean, I-, I can't even get down the l- Evelyn, Greg. Everybody in this organization has been firing on all cylinders this week. We have produced amazing ad content this week. We have been in the press like crazy this week. Our social team has been burning down the house this week, getting in, in the big fights that matter with the bad guys that, that hate us. You know, when Marjorie Taylor Greene and Stephen Miller and, and the rest of the Trump chodes are attacking the Lincoln Project, you know what they're not doing? They're not attacking Joe Biden and the Democrats. That's our purpose. We're a lightning rod. We're willing to be in the fight at the tip of the spear. But this organization this week, and I have left off so many names from the LP family, and I'm sorry. I feel like I'm doing a goddamn Oscars thing right now. But everybody on this team, every single person on this team, Riley, Kevin, B, Jeff 1F, Jeff 2Fs, all of these people in this organization, I have been so proud of the, oh, Maya, bringing back the breakdown with Maya May and I, she has been burning it up. I mean, this thing has gotten so, it's gotten so, there's a, there's a speed and a, and a, and a, and a, just a frenzy about this. Everybody at the Lincoln Project wakes up every goddamn day and you know what they say? How are we going to fuck up Donald Trump and win this election? We got a hundred and some odd days to go, folks. Let's make it count. See you next week. Good luck.